Hi, everyone. I'm Stan Miller. I'm the PR and Analyst Relations Manager for Rockwell Automation in the EMEA region. And I'm here with Nicola Yovine. He is our Strategic Business Developer for Digital Design. Nicola, thank you for joining us at the Rock Studio. Thank you, Stan, for inviting me. Very excited to be here. Well, and we're here talking about a very exciting topic. We're here to discuss solving challenges faster and easier with Digital Twin. This is a hot topic. I can tell you, certainly from a PR perspective, I'm sure it's very interesting and with a lot of curiosity from customers as well. So if you don't mind, let's just get to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so can, you, can we just start out first by level setting us on what is Digital Twin? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, yeah, there are, the, there are different meanings and opinions around Digital Twin, but in short, I will say that the Digital Twin is a digital representation of a physical assets, might be a machine or a manufacturing line, and it's, it's, a, it's a dynamic model which is based on the physics of the machine and the real assets, and it really uh, reacts and responds to every operational scenario like it could be a, a, real, a real machine. So now, uh, the Digital Twin, it's not a static, uh, but it's a, uh, it's a dynamic model which could change over time uh, with, as the, the real counterpart. And uh, when you think about the Digital Twin, it's not really an identical clone or identical replica of the physical assets, but what we say is that it's a useful model. So we help customers to build a useful model, meaning that the level of fidelity and granularity and the level of complexity of such a model should be just enough to you know, help the customer to accomplish what they are trying to do, whether it's a simulation or an emulation or running a virtual commissioning. Okay, that's really helpful. So let's get into what's fueling the interest in digital twin capabilities. Yeah, so the digital twin actually is not a, a brand new concept. I mean, uh, we have customers working with digital twin since many years in different industries and in different applications. But reality is that with, if you look at the pandemic and the COVID-19, so we were all forced to work remotely and, you know, you could not travel uh, with the lockdown and so on. And, uh, and, and customers are starting to think about, okay, I cannot access my machine. So what should I, how can I get access to it without, you know, physically being in front of the machine? And, uh, and that's, uh, that's one of the points, right? So the other one is, is the supply chain issue. So, uh, of course, I mean, with the pandemic, we had a, a lot of our customers are experiencing, you know, issues in, in getting their, their material, the, their hardware. So this is delaying the, the, the time they need to build their machine physically. So now they, they want to test anyhow their machine, right? So they want to save time. They want to start doing the, the design of new machine. And so that's where the digital twin is really helping our customers. So because being in front of your PC and, you know, with the digital model of your machine, which is acting really like the, the real machine, this will help our customer to, to test, you know, uh, the, their machine without getting access to the physical machine. So they are still waiting for the hardware to be shipped, but they are already uh, working on, on the digital model, right? So, and then the, the last piece is the, you know, in the last couple of months, we have seen the energy cost, which is, you know, going to the roof. So a lot of our companies are, and customers are trying to, to save travel and expenses. So having a digital twin will really help our customers to, to limit their time they spend on site. So they can really limiting the traveling and all the costs associated with it because they have the digital model of their machine just in front of them in their office or you know working from home on the PC and they can test and do whatever they want on that digital model. That makes a lot of sense, Nicola. So can you explain to us what are some of the production benefits companies can expect from adopting digital twin? Yeah, absolutely. So I say I, I will say that digital twin is is really redefining the the uh, the manufacturing industry right now. So um, suppose you you can get a, a digital model of your machine or your manufacturing line, and it's behaving just the, the, like the real thing, right? So think about it. You can detect potential issues, testing new settings, new layout. You can analyze whatever can be analyzed on a, on a digital model, on a virtual model, because you know it will act exactly the, like the real thing. Now, in this context, basically, you can uh, start thinking about optimizing your machine 
ch testing things like the speed or drives or a new layout. You want to bring new robots in the machine just to achieve uh, the, the, the performance that you are expecting from your machine or even improving those performances. Then the second piece is really um, starting con testing your, your automation system, your PLC code, before physically connect to the to the real model so that's what you can do with the with the digital twin and then the last piece is really about reimagining the the training and the maintenance of your machine because you can bring them into a, a virtual reality into an augmented reality where you can feel really and uh, uh, to be in front of the machine and start operating with this with, with your machine without being uh, uh, available at that time so that's a completely new world right fantastic so can you explain for us how this approach uh, can impact organizational decision making and, and risk management around new product projects? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. So, if you think the way how we our customers are now um, carrying out their 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 projects, uh, we uh, we call it like a sequential workflow. So, you start with the design, then you move on with the uh, with the supply of the material, the manufacturing, and then the commissioning. So. Uh, you have different phases. Once one phase completes, then the next one will begin, right? So now if you use a digital twin, you can really m change this, this workflow to a more parallel type of engineering. So having the possibility to, to build a digital model of your machine, this will help you to start all the testing and validation earlier in, in the project. So you don't have to wait for the machine to be built or you don't have to wait for the design to be completed. Because now you can start um, testing your, your machine virtually and also collaborating with all the other um, design departments, right? So you have a lot more of collaboration between the mechanical department, the electrical and the automation department. And you can start detecting those issue on the digital model and then send back almost real time to the mechanical department. So this is actually a great benefit, and, and of course it's changing also the way how the, uh, the uh, companies and the enterprise are, are working together, because now you don't have any more those silos in the company, those offline type of uh, uh, conversation and communication, but you have a more dynamic and, and parallel uh, communication with a lot more of collaboration between all the different stakeholders. It's remarkable how the technology unlocks so much opportunity. Absolutely. Um, as uh, how you explain it. Okay, last question, and that's, can you just share an example of where Rockwell has helped a customer to implement digital twins, whether it's emulate 3D, for example, as part of a, their machine life cycle, um, or, and maybe some of the outcomes that they achieved? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, so we have different use cases, right? So we, we, we uh, specifically with emulate 3D, we, uh, we had, uh, you know, different customers adopting it and, and getting a lot of results and a lot lot of outcomes out of that. But I want to pick just uh, the, one of the recent one. So as a, as a customer doing uh, uh, what we call, uh, what is called in the industry, vacuum carburizing system. Now, it sounds like a big word. Reality is that it's a, it's a complex process to, you take the iron or the steel and you infuse with the carbon to make it harder. So that's the process. Now, the challenge with this customer is that it's a, it's a very large system. So they, uh, it's very difficult to test, and uh, and you can only test it when it's full, you know, available and built on on the customer side. So the other thing is that when you are on customer side, then uh, you have very tight uh, schedules, right? A very tight down uh, deadline, and also uh, if you are testing on site, it can lead also to some, you know, unplanned production downtime, which is something our customers are not really happy about it, right? Now. Um, the, the typical commissioning time of this project is, or this, this type of system, is around 10 months. So they started looking at the, at the MOLE 3D to build a digital twin of those systems. And you know what? So they were able to shrink down the commissioning time from 10 months to 5 months. So 50%. So you can imagine all the uh, savings that you, they had, you know, with the reduced uh, reducing by five times the time they spend on site. And you can also understand how the end user was really happy about it because they get their machine five months in advance. So this means that they were able to start the production much earlier. So 
the other piece is, which is not less important, is that those customers, because they were able to deliver on time their system, they win two new projects with the same end user. So this is a great example of how um, the Emulate 3D and the digital twin technology is helping our customer to be really faster to the market, reduce their commissioning time, but also being more competitive in the market because they were able also to win new projects and new business. Nicola, that is, talk about a result achieved. That is a fantastic example. Thank you for that. And thank you for coming and visiting us at The Rock Studio. It's been a great discussion, and I think I've certainly learned a lot, and I'm sure our viewers have as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. And for those of our, who are watching, thank you for visiting us at Rock Studio. Uh, if you have any questions, follow up. Nicola is on LinkedIn, so look him up. Uh, and of course, there's lots of information on the Rockwell Automation website, rockwellautomation.com. Thanks for watching.